Hi, beautiful people. I'm Shanika. I'm Chloe. I'm Corey. I'm Kelsey. And we are Mother. We are Black mothers. And artists in a big city. Navigating motherhood for the first time. Through a pandemic. Sharing our personal experiences. The sweet moments with the kids. Mwah. And all the shit they don't tell you. Motherhood. Raw. Undressed. And unapologetic. This journey can be a mother. Shut your mouth. This is Mother. All right, ladies. Here we are. Another episode of Mother. Um, So today we're going to talk about where to give birth or where do I give birth? Um, We all have had slightly different experiences. So I think this is going to be a really interesting conversation just talking about the specifics of the place that you give birth, because there are so many things around that that can affect your birthing experience, right? Um, So the first thing that I wanted to sort of talk about is, or open up for discussion is, did you feel like you had options for where to give birth? Now, I think it's, it's important for us to also note that we all were giving birth in the pandemic, right? So that also kind of, um, I think influenced a lot of our decisions about how we decided to go about things, but, and, and I think it made things a lot more complicated for, for us specifically, but I just wanted to sort of introduce this topic by talking about whether we felt like we had options specifically living in New York and all of that. Um, I, I don't know. I guess it's also right. Like, you know, I was privileged enough to have health insurance. So I guess technically like if someone's outside looking in, I had a lot of options. Um, but as far as not having a totally medicalized birth, I don't know if that's a word I'm making that up. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I had a lot of options that way. I was really supported by insurance for a, you know, a traditional hospital birth. And I was looking for alternatives to that. And when I weighed out the cost of those alternatives, I felt discouraged by how much it was going to cost me to have the birth that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I made a decent amount of sacrifices to make sure that I wasn't going broke, uh, you know, being pregnant and going broke, giving birth. So. Which is, that's how I felt. Really insane that we even (laughs) think about that. You know what I mean? You have to think about money when you're doing something. What what were things that you felt that you couldn't do because money was a problem? Like what, what exactly was it? I'd love to know. I really wanted to have um, a midwife. Um, and be, um, have a midwife in a hospital setting or a birth center setting. Mm -hmm. And, um, there were very, I found that there were very few options for midwives that worked in hospitals that weren't outside contractors. Cause once they were outside contractors and had privileges in the hospital, you are paying them and the hospital. So that's, and it was just like those, you know, you're spending thousands of dollars just like have a midwife. So I, I really only found two, two or three midwives that worked in the hospital system in New York, which is why I ended up going to Long Island. My hot, I, my hot, I. No way. I didn't know that either. I don't think I knew that. Yes. It didn't work out that way because he came so fast. <laughs> but I, went to post, I was supposed to give birth in Long Island. That's where I had all my, my appointments and everything. I drove an hour and a half outside the city to um, the hospital with, they had a, a group of midwives working in the hospital. No. Wow. Every, uh, by myself, once a month, every every, whatever Monday, I think I would go. You felt that strongly that you wanted a midwife that you Yes. Five an hour and a half. Yes. And I felt that uncomfortable having, and I have a great OB that I used to go to. I've been going to the same OB in Manhattan for years that could have delivered my baby, but I felt that uncomfortable with having an OB in a hospital system that I felt the need that I, I, for my birth, I wanted to drive an hour and a half and not come out of pocket, you know, gazillions of dollars. Yeah. Um, 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 that's so interesting. Yeah, um, so for me, I guess 
one big thing is I actually began my pregnancy not in a pandemic Mm -hmm. so I didn't I wasn't even thinking of any options for pandemic birth um and obviously because I'm from London I had no idea how different it is here um back home you always have a midwife that's just how it is you always like that is the standard you have a midwife and your doctor so that was something I didn't even think about or realize I wouldn't have wow. <laughs> to start. and secondly I think it's pretty easy you can just kind of like make the decision closer to the time about if you want a water birth like in the birthing center it's pretty standard I want to say and where Kyle is from in Canada as well um his sister who has a baby eight weeks younger she didn't have to make a decision till close to the time and then she decided oh I want to have it in a birthing center so she had it in a pool and stuff which I would have obviously loved Mm -hmm. and also thought I ended up having my um um Campbell uh at Mount Sinai West and they used to have a birthing center attached so I got really excited because I thought that was still there and then I come to find out that it's not there anymore it's and that was recent they have just they just closed it I'm so excited about it um I have a girlfriend who gave birth there as well yeah I was just like so so that didn't happen but I found my OB because I also had seen I also didn't really have an OB um that I was seeing regularly so I really didn't know um but I kind of got a recommendation from a friend um, and I loved her and she was kind of far for me because she was on the Upper West Side and I'm in Brooklyn. So it was, it was a bit of a trek as well. Um, but I really, really liked her. But it was still that. Yeah, it was I kind of didn't really realize that I had options until it was too late. And then I really liked her at that point. Um, and also my mom had emergency c-sections every single time like she three times um and she was ad she was adamant that I was having my child in a hospital and I do not blame her at all mm-hmm. um because you know she was just so worried she didn't know if what she had I could also have and so she just really wanted to make sure that I'd be okay so she was like I really really want you to have your baby in a hospital and I, <laughs> I was who am I? Who am I to say anything else? Yeah, you're like, all right, mom, I'll listen. Just yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I guess I really didn't realize that I would be so limited on options because it hadn't occurred. To, I didn't understand how it worked in America. I really didn't. And I maybe should have done a bit more research, but I just guessed it would be similar. I had no idea there's not midwives. Yeah, I no. mean, you know, it's so interesting too, like that specifically in New York City, which I I found mind boggling how few options there are for how many people there are in New York City. The fact that, because for me, I always knew that I wanted to, I didn't want a traditional hospital um, birth. I knew that that was automatically not what I wanted to do. Now, home birth wasn't necessarily my first thought. Um, I was thinking, you know, being in a birthing center with like the the yeah. bed and the like feeling like an apartment and getting in the I pool. And doing the whole thing. A great combination because right. you have yeah. the security of medics, you know, yes. whatever, you know not, not yes. saying, you know, obviously Corey will talk more about the home birthing thing, but yeah. also you get to feel like you're in a relaxed, calm, caring environment. Right. Yes. And typically birthing centers are run by midwives. So yeah. you have the midwifery experience, but you have that also underneath the guise of it's attached to a hospital should you need that. And so that was something I was looking into right away. And and I started doing my research as soon as I found out I was pregnant. And, you know, I've come to find out that there's only one birthing center in all of New York City, and that is the Brooklyn Birthing Center. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, oh. which wasn't it close? for a lot of the pandemic or? no it's been open the whole time but they and oh. they actually opened another location so they had had they had the one location in Brooklyn Brooklyn Birthing Center and that's what they've had for years and then they opened another location in Manhattan called the Jazz which is this it's underneath the same 
the jazz dance, the yeah. same um, umbrella, but it's, it's like it's owned by them, but it's just a Manhattan location. Uh, um, and I think that was already in the works pre-pandemic, but then it, they ended up getting extremely busy during the pandemic, obviously, because people were wanting to make that choice to be in, you know, a more secure environment and not wanting to be in the hospital. Um, but I, you know, we looked into Brooklyn Birthing Center and, you know, I was like, okay, this feels like a, a safe, happy medium between a home birth and a hospital birth. I can still go to the hospital if I need to. And so we did like one of those orientation things where like, you know, they, the midwives come on and they talk about it and da da da. And as they were talking, I just like, I wasn't feeling settled about it. And I also like a lot of the things that they were describing felt very similar to a hospital to me in terms of the fact that they were like, well, we have a team of midwives and you don't know who you're going to get. It's like, it all depends on when you go into labor and all of that. And so basically I felt like literally my only option was to have a home birth because if I wanted to have a guarantee that I was going to have the same people that have been with me throughout the nine months of my pregnancy, a home birth was the only way because you don't know if your doctor is going to be on call or not when you go into the hospital. And it's the same with the birth. That was, that was another thing that I didn't even think about. And then we got yes. the time and my doctor said that. And I was like, what? You're not, of course, why would she, she's not going to be on call 24 seven for me. Totally. Yeah. But like, you don't really think about that. Cause you're no. like, you love your provider. You're like, yeah, that's going to be the person that does it. But like, lo and behold, they could possibly be on vacation. And, and especially when I, around when I was due, because I was due January 3rd. So I'm like due around holiday season when people are going on vacation and doing whatever, obviously the pandemic, you know, who, who knew what was going to be happening with that, but still people may have chosen not to be in the hospital during those dates. And I didn't, yeah. I could have gone into labor on Christmas day for all I knew, you know? Yeah. So did the birthing center, accept, like what's the insurance policy? With the so they take, they take insurance. They did take insurance. I didn't really investigate too much further beyond um, the initial, because when we got off of the orientation, I was like, I'm not feeling it. And that's my only option. So like, it's either. Can I be honest? Yeah. So I, I looked into that as well. Cause obviously I was like, okay, birthing center. But, and I don't know, maybe they just need like better marketing, but it looked very dated and sterile and not very like, it just looked dated. Yeah. And it felt like I was in a bad 80s movie, like yeah. from the pictures and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to like call me like whatever. I, you know, I, I knew that a hospital room wasn't going to be much more inviting, but it just looked very dated. To I me. agree with you. I agree with you. And the, and the, Brooklyn Birthing Center, that location like really does look that way. The jazz one in Manhattan looked a lot more updated because it was a brand new space. Um, and they had like, you know, they made it feel like a little bit more contemporary right. and modern, the apartments or the places that you were that you were in. But I didn't want to go to, yeah. Manhattan. you know, like if I'm going to do a, a, a birthing center I want to be as close to home as I possibly can um so yeah. yeah I didn't really look into insurance that much and and yeah I didn't feel like I had it wasn't like I felt like forced into having home birth I'm really happy I did but in terms of what I wanted I was very specific about what I wanted I knew I wanted to have my sane people around me and I wanted yeah. to feel safe and the home birth was really the only way that I could do that and I just it was really disappointing, like in this process of, of, of trying to do the research, how few options we have here in New York. Like you would think that we would have the cream of the crop in terms of options and you go, and I was looking up doulas and midwives and all of that. And so many of them were located in other places and like birthing centers and other places like in Atlanta and Denver and all that. And like, they have so many birthing centers in a lot of these other States and New York state just does not have it together with the that. birthing centers in Texas look like hotels. Gorgeous. Why is Texas that? And want in Georgia. That. Do you think it's just like a space thing? Cause there's not, I think it's space and money. Yeah. And also I had been reading up because there were quite a few birthing centers here in New York and they had such low attendance that a lot of them just went out of business. Mm. That's yes, why. I wonder, like why, the, I wonder why the Mount Sinai West one. Because like, people weren't using it. 
they weren't sure. using it. Cause I remember I had a girlfriend who gave birth there and they, um, she was telling me about her experience and it was amazing oh. all that stuff. But she was saying that, um, uh, the doctor that she was with was like, yeah, no one really uses it. I'm sure you're going to be there by yourself. And she ended up being in the unit completely by herself when she gave what? birth to her child. Like there was no other mom in the birthing center. Is that, wow. do you think, and do you think it's because people don't just don't really know about the options? Cause I feel like you so quickly kind of get put in the, in the cycle and you don't, and so many moms that I've spoken to that kind of had not great experiences in hospitals, I think they didn't just didn't realize there was other options because yeah. you kind of get, pregnant. You know, that's what I thought because yeah. especially not being from this country is you get pregnant, go to an OB and that's, that's what you do. That's how you, you know. Because it's a dated process. There's been, you know, even the OBs are like, they have dated information, you know, mm-hmm. like, so it's just like, it's what you see on TV, you know, you, it's, 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 and no one, I also had so many moms that had bad experiences or like, you know, like telling me like they're forced, you know, everyone tells you their horror stories about their birthing process, which I did. And I, I'd actually try not to anymore because like for like my friends that are pregnant, cause like it can be traumatic, you know, like, yeah. Oh, they didn't listen to me. And they gave me two, um, you know, two uh, epidurals and I didn't need them. And then like, they're like, like all these like, Crazy. <laughs> so yeah. Trying not yeah. to scare yeah. them, but also trying to give them the real tea because I, have to say, like, I love telling my story because I feel like it's very positive. And so I'm like, <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. You're like, you can do a hospital birth and you can have a good hospital birth. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's so, yeah. it's, it's, I do think that a lot of women just don't know what their options are. Like they don't, yeah. they're not aware. And even, you know, I can't say, I mean, outside of the very dis- dis- disturbing statistics around black women in hospitals in this country and specifically in New York City, I was very privy to before I got pregnant. Um, but I, but I think that the pandemic really aided in me doing a lot more research than maybe I would have done prior yeah. to that because I felt, you know, that there was just an added layer of disturbance for me, honestly, about being in a hospital because I'm like, oh, I already have very high chances of not making it out of here alive in a normal world. And now we're talking about this global pandemic and this, this, you know, disease that's going around that's already take also taking out our people more likely than it is taking out other people too. And I just was like, you know, that just the double whammy of it all feels like I just- well, And the added, like, you might not be able to have your other half there. Right. Which like, when, when you gave birth, Chloe, that was actually like, for me, I was like, okay, that well- was- that was so stressful. I mean, yeah, I just, I just, and I know you had, you know, you had a relatively good experience and Kyle got to be with you, but like just the mass and all that, I was nervous about, I didn't want to give birth with a mask because I didn't know how it was going to feel. And like the idea of having to just have that extra restriction also. Was, like, yeah. What's that? I worked out, I worked out in my mask the last trimester so that I could prepare myself to push in a mask. You did? Yeah. I honestly yeah, forgot I even had a mask on, to be fair. Bless you. <laughs> but yeah, that's amazing. That I've been amazing. about doing that. That's yeah, amazing. Just, I was like used to like breathing with it on my face. But I that's actually like had a, the not, not a friend. I don't know. It's not a friend, but a friend of a friend had gave birth and her husband tested positive for COVID. And they said, you can't be in the room. So she had to call her her best friend to come and be oh, with her because so they would room for their first child. Oh, that's no way. So horrible. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Well when when I when I was giving birth, that was when the test still took ages. So I had my test, Kyle had, had yeah. his test, then I had my whole labor oh. given birth oh. and we still hadn't got our results back. We had to we wait. Could have had COVID. Huh? For yeah. all they know you could have had it. No, but that's the thing. So it actually was like a really sucky, which we'll probably get into, but it was a sucky situation because they treat you like you've got COVID until they know you don't. Right. So the whole process just sucked. Yeah. So they tra- they treated everyone like they had COVID in the hospital. Yeah. That's yeah. just, you know, yeah. It's, 
<laughs> I understand for them. It was a scary time. Of course, yeah. of course, of course. But it definitely just added another layer of, of, you know, just frustration and, and stress to an already like very heavy situation. So that kind of leads me into this next part of this, which is to ask if you were happy with the place that you gave birth. And if yes, explain. Uh, if not, why? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you guys know why. I mean, because I, unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, it was, it, it turned out to be okay, but I didn't go to the place I was supposed to have to give birth because this guy came out so quickly. Um, <laughs> So I was not happy with the place I gave birth because it was unfamiliar. Um, They were mean. Um, They were very aggressive with me. Um, And if I hadn't done the research I did and I didn't know my body and I didn't have my doula, um, I probably would have had a different outcome. So um, like even just like, are you okay, Bubba? (laughs) I <laughs> His little <cough. laughs> Jackson, are you okay there? Are you okay? Jackson? okay? Let it out, let it out. <laughs> um, so so I was not, and that's one I and it was like it's funny, it's like all the all the research that you did and all of the like making sure that you're protected and being as safe as you can as a you know, surviving the the hospital system as a black woman. And it yeah, I don't want to say that all my worst fears came true because I still was able to navigate the waters in this hospital, but things that I had heard about and like the things that doctors could say to me and all that stuff like happened, mm. right? Like the, like the, after Jackson came out, the, 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 um, OB, the head OB, I was doing delayed plant, delayed cord clamping, right. Mm-hmm. Which everyone knows is really beneficial for the baby. You let the cord go, I blah, blah. And I think I didn't let them cut it at first. And then, and then we, they were all staring at me and it was quiet. And then I think of like maybe five minutes, five, six minutes had gone by and hospital policy is 90 seconds, by the way. 90 seconds for delayed cord clamping. Wow. Well, that's not delayed cord clamping. <laughs> not delayed cord clamping. Yeah, not at all. So, so I, so it was like five or six minutes and she yells, she gets really aggressive. She goes, if I don't cut the cord now, your baby might die. What? No, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not kidding. While he's like laying on my chest while we're like having this like bonding moment. She said your baby <laughs> might die. Might die. Said, your baby might die if I don't cut the cord now. He's gonna get some jaundice or something. I was like, Oh not. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I looked at her, I looked at her, I said, I can, can we curse? I don't know. Can we curse on I said, oh, you don't yeah. have to be so <laughs> you don't have I looked at her dead in her face. I said, You don't have to be so fucking aggressive. Wow. <laughs> good for you. Yeah, good for you. But, and also it's my baby. I can do what I want. Don't tell me what to do with my child. And I know people sit all day with their damn umbilical. Like I, people literally all day and have ceremonies to burn off. The literally, baby. Carver had really? his attached to him for hours. We didn't. Yes, cut like people like hours. burn a candle to like ceremoniously like disconnect the mother from the child. Like it's fine. The baby's it's fine. fine. It sustained them for nine months. <laughs> and I want him to get all the goodness that comes from. It was literally like five or six minutes. It's not like it was like you know, yeah, yeah. 12 hours later and I'm still, right. you know, she's literally what she said to me that. while I'm holding my brand new baby on my bosom. Wow. That is yeah. disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It was that's bad. Disgusting. She apologized after she apologized, but she came back and apologized. Yeah. Oh, that's well, she should have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. And only because I called her out on it and right. made her realize that her behavior was inappropriate. Yeah. Had I not, she wouldn't have said anything. And yeah. it's like, I'm sure you're getting to the next thing or whatever you have next on your schedule. But like, so wow. they were over me. They were ready for me to go. Cause I oh, was, sure. <laughs> they were mm-hmm. like, she's too much. She's, she's too much she's knowledgeable. We need to get her. Yes. Out of here. Uh-huh. Yes. How she's many women, much. how many women just take that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they go to the yeah. hospital and they just trust that the doctor knows best all the time. Here. Yeah, and they just get afraid to to advocate for themselves, which is why yep. like having a doula is a really awesome option because yep. at least you know you have somebody else there that's a little bit more well versed in the 
you know, hospital yeah. lingo that sometimes can happen that makes you feel pressured, you know? But you that is... with you in the room? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was able to come. That they had finally the uh, Cuomo had wrote that uh, that executive order that doulas were allowed in the room. They weren't. They didn't count as your like guest or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. She was in the room, and you know, she she was she because they were it, that I kept batting against them. They were like making me. They were trying to make me push when I didn't feel like I was ready to push, and I had to tell her. I was like, tell them that I'm waiting until the contraction comes to push. And I, again, like my friend just came, a friend of my friend just had a horror story where this hospital was making her push and she like ripped, ripped, ripped all the way. Her baby was in the NICU. Like she like had so many injuries because they kept forcing her to push when she wasn't ready. And it's just like, I stood my ground. I was like, I'm not, you can't make me, that's one thing you can't make me push. Yes. I'm not. Yeah. So we're going to all sit here and y'all going to be quiet. Yeah, I'm, just, comes. I'm so confused. That's yeah. just yeah. it's just that medicalized. They're on a time schedule. I they expect yeah. birds to take you know certain amount of minutes. Yeah. They also didn't know I was coming because I wasn't. A, I hadn't. This, you know, I was literally just walking up out of the street, screaming about my babies falling out of me. You know, so I don't know. But so that's why that's my answer. My long winded answer. <laughs> <laughs> The short of it is no, the, you were not trying to break your experience. <laughs> um, yeah, I had like I actually had a good experience, but um, I love OB, love her, and she was incredible. And thank God, basically, because um, I had to get induced. And she said I could either wait a few days, go back and get another, because I was a geriatric pregnancy. So I was getting more. I hate that word. <laughs> I mean, she never, she honestly never said geriatric pregnancy. She like always forgot my age. She was like, you're not old. Um, <laughs> however, the hospital needed to do more ultras ultrasounds. Is that the one? Yeah. 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 So anyway. So after the last one, um, she said, you can either wait a few days, get another ultrasound, or you can just come in tonight and get induced. <laughs> Corey remembers all this. Yes. Um, and so I, you know, I'd done like the positive birth experience. So I kind of knew everything that there was to know about inductions. Blah, blah, blah. And so I kind of made my own informed decision that I would just get induced that night, which also meant I could have my doctor because she was going to be there in the morning. So I was like really happy because I love her so much and she's so great. She's been, she'd been there from like the beginning, you know, she'd like, she knows, she knows me the whole, my whole birth. Um, and she's just really cool and like advocates for you and just doesn't do any bullshit. So I was really happy that she would be there. She was great. However, the nurses, <laughs> not so great. Um, and it sucks because I actually had a great night nurse who was amazing. I, When we first came in, I explained everything I wanted. I said, I really want to do as natural as possible. I want to be able to move positions. She was so on board with everything. I bought like my ball, yoga ball you know, to be able to lean on and everything. And she was just so great, so lovely. Um, because I was induced and attached to stuff, I had to use a bedpan to like poo. <laughs> <laughs> like sat opposite that my husband. <laughs> You're like, hey uh, Kyle. <laughs> Hi Kyle, are you enjoying this? Well he's like wrapped up because he's like, it's so cold in here. I'm freezing. I'm like, good for you. You're like my vagina's out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just doing a poo in front of you. Hi. <laughs> anyway, but like she was so great at like, you know, helping me clean all of that up. You know what I mean? She was mm -hmm. awesome. Then the morning shift happened, and the nurses that I got were not so awesome. And they just, oh, like you know, it's like a different vibe, I guess. You know, in the night, it's just different. Mm -hmm way quieter and then the morning comes and it's like all go you're hearing people screaming as they're like coming in labor and you're like ah and um, <laughs> and also it was still kind of early on so anytime they entered also ev you know everyone was had covid until we didn't have covid and the test took like i want to say the test took maybe 12 hours to come back so it was like a really long time 
Um, so you're treated like you have COVID. So no one really wants to come in your room because every time they came in a room or left a room, they had to change everything. So anytime I had to press a, the buzzer for anyone, it took ages for anyone to come in. Um, and so when people came in in the morning, you know, I had like my birth plan of what I wanted to do or whatever. And so I was, you know, very much like advocating for myself because I had a doula in quotes. <laughs> and couldn't, that couldn't come in at that time. And so was on available, like if needed, but like wasn't, I wish she'd been just on FaceTime the whole time but she wasn't. She was just like, okay, well, call me if you need me kind of thing, which was fine most of the time because I was just in my zone doing my breathing, positive birth company stuff. Um, however, there were definitely times. So when the nurses came in and I was like, okay, this is what I want. I really want to do as natural as possible. Like I really don't want an epidural. I want to, you know, um, change positions as much as I can. Um, and I was, I think I said, oh, what are some good positions? Because the night nurse had been amazing. She's like, oh yeah, I've done loads of different positions with people. You know, she was awesome, but she couldn't stay. She had to go. So anyway, one of the nurses goes to me, the best position is an epidural position. Oh, that's, I forgot. Oh my God. Yeah. Kyle, like was so- With a straight face? Yeah. She was like, oh, the best, like literally being like, you need, you should have, make sure you have an epidural. epidural. And they kept being like, oh, so we're going to get the epidural ready. And I was like, Kyle's like, no, she doesn't want an epidural. And it's just, you know, maybe in the end I would have wanted one, you know? But you're saying you don't right now. So I didn't want one. (laughs) And Kyle was like, she doesn't want an epidural. But I'm like, to then come back and be like, the best position is an epidural position. I was so pissed, but whatever. So it wasn't great. And then the nurse that I had, she was kind, she just wasn't, they obviously were all just overworked, tired, scared, all the rest of it, I understand. But also we're still giving birth and going through that. So it would be nice to have a bit of support. Right. You know, I had my mask on, my CP mask on. I had the headphones on. I was just in my zone, breathing through those contractions. Um, and the nurse, so the main nurse that I had, firstly, she told Kyle that he needs to learn what to do with the bedpan and he can clean up after me. Oh yeah. My gosh. She was like, yeah, she was like, you can do this. So yeah, just take this over to the, th-. like literally, you know, you're just like, what? you're like, first of all, I'm paying thousands of dollars to be in this room. Right. Now. Like, yeah, somebody, yeah. yeah, my insurance is paying thousands of dollars. Yeah, she literally what? was like, I don't need to come in for this. He can do this. Yeah, wow. so that was great. And then um, the second thing that killed me is um, she, oh. was, she she came in and she was like, okay. oh, so do you know, you need to do breathing when you're going through contractions. This is like when like I'm already hours in at this point. And I I said, oh yeah, I'm doing the positive, I'm doing hypnobirthing. Um, the Positive Birth Company is a company and they're great for anyone. <laughs> I love them. And um, yeah, so she, you know, she said, oh, I said, oh, I'm doing hypnobirthing. And she rolled her eyes at me so hard. I was like, oh, so what did they tell you to do? And I said, oh, well, you breathe in for four, you breathe out for eight. And then she kind of went, oh, okay, fine. Because I was going to say breathe in for four and out for six. So I was like, oh, oh okay. my gosh. <laughs> I was like, why are you rolling your eyes when I told you what I'm doing? I'm obviously like getting through it and being okay and I'm in my zone. But anyway, so that was that. And then the worst was when it was getting to the end and basically I didn't realize, but it was my body was telling me to push. So I was I was like in panic mode at that point. I'd been pretty good, like just breathing through, grabbing Carl's hand, just getting through it. Cause you just do those breaths four times and then the contraction's done. It was getting, you know, to the end. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. And I'd not been very vocal. And then I started getting a bit vocal. <laughs> anyway, that's when I called my doula who didn't pick up. So that was really helpful. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, um, and then I rang the bell because I didn't know what to do, basically. Mm-hmm. I, I I said to Kyle, because at that point, because my birth, not as quick as yours, Kelsey, but it was pretty quick. And so I didn't think, I think I'd just been measured and I was six centimetres. <laughs> I, thought, 
oh, I've got hours to go. Um, and I was, I, I was like, there's no way I can keep doing this for hours. I can't do it anymore. Mm. But my body started kind of pushing and uh, it was, I was like, what is happening? Am I, do I, am I doing this too? Like what's going on? Yeah. This is like literally exactly what was going through my mind. Not thinking yeah. that it like, that part was so scary. That to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 So weird. So the yeah. nurse finally yeah. comes in because obviously you've got to change and everything. And she tells me, she said, You've just been measured, you're six centimeters. There's no way you're ready yet. You're gonna have to. She told me to stop my body from pushing. She said, do those breaths, and you're gonna have to stop your body from pushing. And then she left. And so then for the next two lots of contractions, yeah, I'm trying to breathe through my body pushing and I'm trying to stop it. And I was like to Kyle, I can't, I was I can't do it. I, I was trying so hard to stop my body pushing. And because at that point, everything I'd kind of learned was gone out the window. Because yeah. it's been like, what, what happened? Because and you know what else she said to me? She said because you know what's going to happen, and I'm not going to say it. Basically, saying you're going to have to have a C-section because you're going to push and you're not ready, and you're going to split everything. So basically, she kind of said that to me as well. I left that one out. So anyway, I'm in pure panic mode, and then I start the the, the vocals come because at that point, because you're I'm, an active labor, yeah. <laughs> Because my, my baby wants to come out. Coming out. I'm trying to hold in, not a pee, a baby. Insane, a, li- a human. You're trying to hold a human in. Exactly. So then my doctor, so she told me after she kind of waits outside the rooms because of the nurse situation. So she kind of has a more active eye on what's happening, mm-hmm. which is why I love her. She heard me, came in straight away, looked and was like, the head's there freaking shouted at the nurse and was like get in here um and then yeah and then everything else was good and they do delayed cord clamping there so that was good and and like all the rest was like okay um apart from after after (laughs) after the recovery um but yeah so basically long story short dr great (laughs) nurse is not so great but I understand they were under pressure. It was like a different time. I just wish, I just felt there's not much care from what I experienced in the hospital no. setting. No. And luckily I was very, I had given myself all the knowledge I needed, all the tools I needed to be able to have the pregnancy I wanted. Um, and I'm so yep. happy that I was so knowledgeable to yep make it happen how I wanted it to happen. Totally. Totally. And I'm, I'm sure that if you had had a doula that was there, that could have combated the nurse situation because you would have at least had, whenever the nurses were out of the room, you would have had a person there that was really kind of rooting for you and, and just there to listen to you. Um, So it feels like a very unique to the situation. Not been there if you had, you know, had, had the doula. I, yeah. I, uh, That's why I think midwives are so important. And back home, you have a midwife. Mm-hmm. It's just because you need, you need that support. Obviously you're, you know, Kyle was as good as he could be, you know, but he's also experiencing it with me for the first mm-hmm. time. You need that person that is supportive. And why do you have to pay so much money to have a doula? Like, I mean, doulas can be incredible. Um, it's just unfortunate that it's for people that have the privilege of being able to afford it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or they're like, okay, we really so want is to so go. does so is the knowledge mm-hmm. to some degree. Yeah, the course is that knowledge. Things. Yeah. One hundred percent. That's so yeah. true. And you know, it's so interesting too. I just feel like, I mean, obviously, midwifery was the the main source of of giving birth to babies for a very long time. Like that was the way that, and that's why I think a lot of other parts of the world that is still the standard. It's very American to have 
doctors who are trained to do surgery because that's what obstetrics is <laughs> it's <laughs> surgery and and you know giving birth to a child doesn't always require that sometimes it does but for the most part it's not something that needs to have a medical doctor involved yeah which is why midwifery exists it's like they are they're trained to deliver babies that is literally uh, what they do and so yeah. you know from my experience personally I had a midwife and, and a doula because I had a home birth and I felt I wanna, and I want to backtrack on the doula because I think doulas like what they do is incredible. Yes. It's a shame that it's not available to everyone. Everyone. Yes. yes. As, yeah. as just a standard or covered by insurance or, yeah. you yes. know, anything like that. And, you know, I, I definitely want to speak a little bit to insurance in my situation because I've had a lot of questions about insurance with having a home birth and, you know, I can, I can take you through the gamut, but I won't do that for this, for this moment, but I will talk a little bit about the, the costs that are involved with it, because I think it's an important element to, to discuss. Um, but, you know, overall for me, I was very happy with my birthing experience because it went exactly the way that I wanted it to. And I know that that is a, a rare occurrence, even in the most healthy of situations, because you just don't know what you're going to get. Okay. Every baby's different. Every pregnancy is different. You know, yeah. I tried to do all the things and you can do all the right things and still end up in a situation that you don't want to be in. And so I feel really fortunate that that I was able to have a healthy baby at home and not have any emergency situation that would have taken me out of that. Although I came close because two weeks before I gave birth, um, my son was measuring small, his belly was measuring small. The rest of his body was growing on track, but his belly was in like a, I think it was like the seventh percentile. And they were telling, telling me that my midwife was having me go to an OB to get ultrasounds. And um, the OB was basically saying, if it drops below 6%, I don't want you to have a home birth. I want you to go to a hospital. Um, so obviously that was very traumatic for me after having gone through my entire pregnancy thinking like, I'm going to have a home birth and I'm planning to be at home. And two weeks before my due date, all of a sudden everything's different. Um, but I will say that in having a midwife in that situation was incredible. Um, my midwife's name is Lashana King, and she's awesome. And she worked in the hospital system for a really long time before very recently starting her own practice as a home birth midwife. So she had a lot of experience in the hospital. She had a lot of connections in the hospital. And one thing that I felt really awesome with with her was that when we talked about the possibility of me going to a hospital, she gave me an incredible plan. She had a, a plan where she would be able to be with me. She also had another plan where she had a midwife that she trusts greatly that she was going to connect me with. Should she not be able to be with me? She was like, I'll, I'll connect you guys. You can FaceTime, you can do all the things so that if, and if you do need to be in a hospital and I'm not able to come in with you, you can be with her. And she's also a midwife and understands, you know, your situation and what you want. And so I just felt so supported and so heard and so listened to in a situation that felt really scary for me. And she was on the phone with me for like an hour while I was having a full meltdown on the street after I'd left the OB. Um, and she just was amazing. And so for me, having a, having a midwife meant having a friend who was trained to deliver my baby. And that was like just invaluable, honestly, in terms of how scary the world was at that point. And then also at right before I was about to give birth, I already had those natural fears about like, what's it going to feel like? What's it going to be like? I'm going to be at home. I'm not going to have drugs. And then on top of that, like having the stress of, of not knowing if I was even going to be able to have that plan. And so it was really nice to have, um, a midwife to sort of go through that with, and just to sort of tap a little bit on, on the costs incurred from that. So, you know, insurance does not cover home births, <laughs> um, obviously. And I knew that going in, um, the uh, one incredible thing about my midwife and most midwives have this is that they'll have a biller that is, um, responsible for sort of dealing with insurance companies and making sure that their clients who are the midwives get paid properly for their services. And so before I even signed with my midwife, I had a conversation with the biller. She looked through my insurance and she gave me a basically gave me a script 
to call Cigna. And she was like, these are the codes that you ask for. You ask what the amount of money is and just write it down. And so I was like, great. I mean, it was so simple and so easy. And I called and they gave me the codes. They gave me the percentages, all the things I wrote everything down and I gave it to her. She called and verified it. And then once she verified it, she told me that our insurance was going to cover 70% of the cost and that, you know, if I wanted to sign on, go ahead. So I did signed on. So felt great. great. But yeah, also awesome. like just nuts that you have to be calling it. Like, I know, oh. I know, but it ended up being interesting because they gave these codes. Like, I don't know any of the shit that they, that they were talking about. So obviously I wasn't like calling and making this stuff up. Like I was given this information from somebody who's very skilled in dealing with insurance companies. And so lo and behold, after I give birth to my baby, um, obviously the, the midwife company, the biller was like, okay, so we want to resolve this once you're out of her care, which I'm under my midwife's care for six weeks postpartum. So my midwife was still coming to the house and checking on me and doing all that stuff. And then after the six weeks, they kind of want to like, you know, stitch up all of the the billing and stuff. And so I, she messaged me and she was like, okay, yeah, like we're, we're still dealing with it, but everything seems to be fine. They said that this is what they're going to cover, blah, 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 whatever. Then I go back and I look on Cigna's website and I see that, um, they have paid my midwife and they basically paid her a Medicaid rate, which would be the equivalent of like, I, I think they ended up paying her like $2,000, <laughs> like something very small for nine months of care and then six weeks of postpartum. No so, uh, yeah, like, it. Literally insane. And so I was like, wait, what? They paid her. And then of course, lo and behold, I hear from the biller and she's like, your insurance company is now going back on what they said and da, 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 da. And like, I've had no luck with it. Um, so now I think it's, it's best that you step in. So I had to step in and speak. Which to is you. also like messed up that you're dealing with a newborn. The last thing you right. want to be doing <laughs> is calling up your insurance and trying to fight and go through loopholes. It's just like, it was literally way too much. It was way too much. And I, and I had to speak to like five different people and I was getting five different answers. And, and one thing I learned about insurance companies during this process is that everybody is making things up. You can speak to one person and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's, th that's what we do. And, da, da, da. and then you call literally an hour later and talk to a different person. Like we don't do that here. And that's absolutely wrong. And, da, da, da. and I literally, people were telling me that these codes and these prices that they were giving me were wrong. And like, you know, we never said that. I'm like, there's no way I didn't make up these numbers. Like I literally was just giving you a code and asking for a number and it was given to me. So why would I lie about that? I have no reason. So basically it was like weeks of me going back and forth before they finally paid her a very fair rate. And ultimately I ended up only being out of pocket $2,500 total. Um, and they ended up paying her, um, the rest of her rate for that. So I think ideally it wouldn't have been a situation where I would have needed to dig as deep as I ended up having to, because ideally my insurance says that they cover a certain percentage out of network and that's it. But it just didn't go that way for some reason. Um, possibly because I had a home birth and I think home births are very taboo within insurance company world and yeah. they don't really like to deal with that. But the funny thing is that home births are substantially cheaper than hospital births for insurance companies. Home births total can cost somewhere around $20,000. Whereas you can go to the hospital and end up incurring a 60 or $70,000 bill for giving birth to a baby between like, you know, drugs and just laying in the bed, they'll charge you like a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So I actually was saving them money. Like, the funny thing. They made me stay an extra day in the hospital. And I don't know if it was for my benefit. I think it was to rack up my, my bill. Oh, totally. Totally. And really? insurance, insurance yeah, companies. I fought, I fought them. I fought the pediatrician. They, they would not let me go home. They're very adamant about it yeah. for no, they didn't really have a lot of cause to keep us. We were both healthy. Really? That's so yeah. We it was, I mean, it was cause of, they played the GBS card cause I had GPS, GBS and he okay. came. So, um, streptococcal <laughs> <laughs> um, GBS, all right? It's GBS. It's a, it's a bad bacteria in your vagina that like uh, predominantly women of color have uh, randomly. It's not harmful to you, 
um, at all. Um, but if you, if your baby passes through the birth canal and, and they get it, it could be harmful for the baby. Um, and how they treat it. Chloe? Huh? You didn't get tested for DBS? For that? Probably. I just <laughs> heard that. Yeah. Yeah. So I tested positive, which was also like so funny because I was so against it. I was like, I don't want antibiotics. Is that the one you get tested for before you give birth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, the, yeah. We're tested for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the swab. Okay. The swab. Okay. Yeah. I'm on the page. Yeah. Yes. So they, they told that me that. myself also just duly noted. Oh, you did? Because of COVID? <laughs> No, I just, because I had a home birth midwife, like she gave me the swab and I just went in the bathroom and did it myself. <laughs> I wish I probably would have <laughs> falsified my r- report, but anyway, <laughs> you, you have to, you have to, they, they treat it by giving you antibiotics, um, yeah, yeah. before four hours before he comes. Um, so they weren't able to do that cause I got to the hospital so quickly and he came so quickly. So they weren't able to give me the antibiotics. <laughs> Oh, I see. So they were they just to monitor you. Right. Mon- even though we had zero, zero signs of any complications. I, I, all the research that I did on GPS, because, you know, as soon as I found out I had it, I went down the rabbit hole and everything said, you will know if there are issues like immediately. Mm. Right. So like they were checking for John and we had no, neither one of us had any symptoms or any triggers to make us think to make them think that we would have any complications from the GPS. Mm. But they, the, 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 the oh. I'll never forget. I was so, so mad. Cause you know, those hospital beds suck. They're <laughs> the most uncomfortable things on the oh world. Oh my gosh. Terrible. Also Kyle shared Terrible. the bed with me. Oh, <laughs> we like, oh, oh, oh my God. Yeah. He was like fully in the bed with me. <laughs> like, We're both small. I'm thing. Well. <laughs> was this after you gave birth or before? Oh no. After I gave okay, birth. I was like, wait, cause before there's no room. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine he's just like in the bed with me as I'm trying to like you're literally like in labor. <laughs> okay, so to kind of wrap this up, this is something that um I think is just a really helpful thing to sort of share with our listeners and, and viewers. Um are there things that you would want people to know specifically about your birth or a hospital birth slash a home birth and how to best prepare? Or, you know, be in a situation where you feel the most um, empowered to advocate for yourself. I have to account of credit my doulas for this. Um, and they were amazing. And we should link them. Um, Ashe Birthing Services. Um, they're great, 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 great women. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love my doulas, Janae and um, Ariel. But um, one of the things that they imp- empowered me to do and what I would empower all, especially if you're giving ho- birth in a hospital, is to find out what you can say no to legally. So that, cause that like, you know, like, like the, like some, like the vitamin K shot or whatever, like in New York, you can say no to the vitamin K shot without them calling child protective services on you. Right. Or knowing like, if you have to, you can say no to an epidural or you can say no to this and this, like figure out what is mandated in your state. Cause there are some, in New York, they used to be able to call Child Protective Services on you if you declined the vitamin K shot and the zithromycin in the eye. They used to be able to, like you were in danger, even though it's totally, you know. So that's that's my best recommendation is to find out what you can say no to, which is sad, but it's something that just you have to do. Figure out what they are, when, when they are, yeah, what you can say say no to legally without getting in you know trouble by the hospital that's crazy Um, that's even a thing but you know yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah I mean there's just I would say just yeah firstly do your research and secondly for me hypnobirthing was incredible I am so glad I did it and I cannot speak highly more highly about the positive birth company it's a British woman and she has this digital pack it was only 40 pounds um which is I don't know 50 dollars or something it's like not expensive because there's a lot of courses that are that are expensive but this one's great it was just loads of videos it gives you so much information and that helped me understand what was going on so that I could just put myself in my own little bubble. Um, Because that's the thing is not everyone can afford a doula. They're so expensive. And I think like, very true. 
it's so expensive and especially we were literally you know pandemic happened I didn't have a job anyway <laughs> then Carl lost his job you know it's like we yeah. just didn't have the funds for that um well we well we obviously we got a doula but you know they they're on price there's price points and so maybe if I'd have paid thousands more I might have had you know a different experience but we just couldn't afford that at the time so I think in, I empowered myself with with all the information I think that's really important because I definitely know friends that didn't know anything and so just went down the rabbit hole of what happens in a hospital if I didn't know and they said epidural position or you need it I'd be like oh okay because as well because I was induced and but because of the positive birth company I I knew I could do it without having an epidural yeah. um but it is definitely very intense um but if you don't know that you can just go down the rabbit hole because it's scary oh. and you think that's just what happens and you know and so I think as much as you can, just empowering empowering yourself, knowing what you need from your birthing partner, um, your support person, to be able to like help you through. Um, and also what really helped me is knowing that there's thousands of other women doing the same thing as I am at, at that time. That mm-hmm. really helped me through. Yeah, that was a big thing for me. Like, I think we talked about this in, a, in another episode, just about like, Um, feeling really connected to like my ancestry during that point and knowing like I can do this this is really hard but I'm not the first person to do this I can I can definitely do this Um, one thing that I think is really important for people to know about a home birth specifically um, is that if you are the type of person that really likes and needs um very concise and specific schedules regarding like appointments and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. A home birth might not necessarily be for you um, because I learned that about myself. Like that was something that was actually really somewhat challenging sometimes for me. And I think there was, it was because of a lot of other things going on. Um, but between my doula and my midwife, because they were also extremely busy during last year, because so many people were having home births there'd be a lot of times where we would schedule appointments and then they'd have a client in labor and so they wouldn't be able to come and so we'd have to reschedule and there would sometimes be things some there would be times where I'd be maybe worried about something or like you know I'd have a question and I'd be really looking forward to Lashana coming over and then she would text me and be like I have a client or I've been in a birth for like you know 48 hours and I'm not going to make it so can we reschedule and that would always feel like a little sad to me sometimes um so I think that that's important to know and that was just something I never thought about like obviously that would happen because you can't put birthing on a schedule at all but it was just something I didn't think about until I was already in the midst of it of like oh of course like she can't come because she's with somebody else that's giving birth to their baby so I think it's it's hard if you're on a nine to five kind of job right right and I think you know And I mean, it worked out because I didn't have, it wasn't like we had anything else to do. So I could just very easily reschedule it. But if you were working or, or, you know, you had carved out a very small amount of time to do this, that might be a little bit more complicated. I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but I just think it's important to know that because it's just something I never really um, thought about. And I do think that with doing a home birth also, like your partner needs to be super informed as well, because that was another, um, thing I wasn't anticipating was that Wayne and I, my husband and I were alone for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's on purpose. It's, it's supposed to be that way because you don't want to feel like your space is crowded with too many people too early. And so my husband and I were really alone for about 16 or 17 hours, while I was in labor before my doula came. So if your partner feels like, you know, too nervous or doesn't really want to be involved, that could be tricky (laughs) because I relied on Wayne a lot. 
Do you also feel like you need to be pre a pretty organized person to do a home birth because you're organizing quite a lot of the stuff or no? Um, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself to be very organized to be you honest. Not. I feel like Corey, I feel like you're so- No, I really don't think I am. That's funny really? that you think that. No, I don't find myself to be very, I'm controlling, yes. <laughs> but <laughs> organized, yeah, I don't know about organized, but I, I don't really feel like I had to organize too much, to be honest. Like, I, like I, it was, you know, the appointments, obviously we were, we had to go back and forth a lot, um, because of, of scheduling and things like that. But outside of that, you know, on, when the day actually came, like my, my midwife sent me the links for all the stuff. Like I had to buy a birthing kit and it, like everything she needed was in there and we just had to make sure she had it. And that was really it. Like I didn't do any preparation. Like, I, I don't, I don't know, maybe I should have done more, but I didn't really do much in our apartment to prepare for it outside of yeah. like, just making sure that I felt comfortable, like everything was clean yeah, yeah. and all of that. But yeah, I think, I think those are the things that are the, the most important, I think, for people to know about choosing to do a home birth and, and just being aware of it. It's not a bad thing. It's just, I, they were things that I just didn't really know beforehand, but you definitely want to make sure that your partner is equipped to go on that ride with you like fully because Wayne was like, <laughs> if you talk to him now, he's like, whoa, he's, he, he might still be a little like traumatized from the experience, <laughs> but it was amazing. It really, it really. Yeah. Amazing. I'm so like, I would have loved to have done a home birth, but then I always think, but I had to be induced. So would right. I have been able to, and then I'm like, but would I have had to have been induced if I'd had a home birth? Who yeah. Knows? Who knows? It's the, it's the ever going spiral of like, I would have a conversation with my midwife all the time about things because when we were talking about the size of Carver's belly, she was like, there was a time when we did not have all this technology and no. babies were born, you know, like we weren't looking at them every, you know, every month to make sure they were okay. We were just trusting nature. And obviously there were situations that did not work out and there, you know, babies, some babies were not born healthy, but that's just statistics, right? Like that's not, it doesn't have anything to do with technology in my opinion regarding birth, because birth is one of the, the most original and natural things that is happening in the world. So, you know, obviously technology is good to a certain extent when you're dealing with extreme situations, but I think the technology really caused me a lot of stress, honestly, towards the end of my pregnancy because yeah, there were- Yeah, I remember- yeah, like I knew a lot of things that I felt like they weren't detrimental to my baby, but they felt like they were because I just had the information. You know what I mean? Well, that's like, how I feel about it just carries on, like percentiles yeah. and like yes. it's just like stress that's like, are they eating enough? Are they, you know, yep. like Carver's on a low percentile for his weight. And, and I'm like, you know, I stress out, but then at the same time, I'm like, he could just be small. Like that just yeah. could be what his DNA is. So why is that, a, why is that wrong? You know? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, there's so many things that we're, that we combat, but I think, you know, ultimately we all had healthy babies and that's the most important thing. And, and I think at the end of the day, that's the most important thing for everybody. But I do think that what, one thing that I think is really important about making the choice about where you give birth is that you feel empowered in that choice. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we all felt like it was important to talk about this is because you have so many options in internally, even if you don't externally have them, you have yeah. to be able to feel like you can take autonomy back over your own body. And yeah. you know, whether you're at home, whether you're in a hospital, a birthing center, wherever you are, and, and just knowing your rights and knowing that you, you have rights and you have a say, you can fire your OB in the middle of pushing if you want to. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, just, just knowing those things and being aware, yeah. I think is and knowledge is thing. power. The more totally. you know, it Completely. really does empower you just to yes. know what's going on with your totally. I completely agree. Yes. Well, that's perfect. So on <laughs> that note, <laughs> thank you all so much. For Sorry, it, it, it looks like midnight where you are. Now. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I just have my window open. I finally moved. I've got more space. Yes. Yay. The natural light, and now I'm in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> 
just I'm gonna turn on my la- my lamp so you can see. Yeah, the last part. <laughs> um, well, thank you all for tuning in, and please make sure to follow us, like, and share on our social media channels. Yeah. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. To stay connected to all things mother, follow us on Instagram at motherlove underscore. That's M-U-T-H-A-L-O-V-E underscore. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube and podcast platform pages. Thanks for listening.